Today on this old house, our new carpenters learn new window replacement. Make sure this weather stripping is out on top of the edge of the case. This tool takes the drudge work out of gas pipe. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice, nice. Here is right on. Family that paints together stays together. Nice job, guys. Where will a slab like this be used? The money's in the detail. Oh, that is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this whole house here in Newton, Massachusetts where this house that we're working on, it's a bit of a mix between old and new. Our homeowner Liz actually grew up in this home and this was her bedroom as a little girl. And there's not a lot of changes going on in that room. As you push down the hallway, this bathroom here was renovated just a few years ago, so no changes to that room. And then as you come to the back of the house, there was a bedroom back here. Part of it is gonna be used for a new laundry room, and then this starts the new space. And so right here is where the master suite starts with the big bedroom. As you come in here, there's gonna be a big master closet, which then you step through into a master bath. Tommy, how are you? Good, Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing all right. So it looks like you are preparing for tile. Yes, this is a, a board that we put on the wall. It's, it actually has a waterproof coating on it. We yes. still have to tape the seams and the screw heads, but it's foam. The substrate is foam. And what I like about the foam, it's very light, but it's really very stable. You like something stable behind tiles so that we don't have any cracks, so that the grout doesn't open up. I, we've used it before, and you've told us that this membrane right here, I mean, that is waterproof. It's waterproof. I've actually done it before where you can get this, this membrane in a roll, so you can put it on a, like your wallpaper. So once this is taped and these are covered up, this is ready for tile? It's waterproof. What do you got left in here? All right, so what we're going to do right now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a bench right oh, here. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right. So a big shower, so there's a place for them to sit. Yeah, yeah. So I've taken a measurement for the bench, and I'm going to start cutting the pieces. Wait, are we building this out of the foam? All out of foam. Now you can build it out of wood, but I like the foam again, like I say, for the stability. Let's do it. All right, so we're actually going to support the top of our bench with this two inch foam board. All right. It's going to be the legs basically? That's going to be the legs. So we've already cut the back part, so now I'm going to just score the front. So now all I got to do is snap this. No noise, no dust. So all we have to do with these now, once I have the pitch going the right way, just place them 16 on center like that. And normally, the way you used to do this is you would mix up thin set, the same thing that sets the tile. And you would cover the edge, cover the back, and then glue it in place. But now they make a caulking, so we can just run a bead of caulking. I mean, it was already easier, and now it's even more straightforward. Although, looking at them, they don't even seem like this is going to be strong enough to sit on and create a bench where you used to use um, two-by stock. Two-bys, a plywood top, you know, all that. But it, so everything's eliminated. But two inches of this foam, super rigid, strong enough. And with this, with this two-inch foam, 16 on center, it's really strong. Across the back. Inside, bring it in. Beautiful. That's you ready it. for the top? And we're ready for the top. Okay. Top coming in for you. All right. So let me just get some more on this. I'm going to do the top of all of these legs. All right. So now I'm just going to put a piece right on the front. Front is actually the thinner material. It's the same thing that we used on the wall. What do you think, Tommy? I mean, could you sit on that thing right now? Absolutely. Sturdy enough? Yeah. Maybe for me, but I don't know about you. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, very strong. So we've got some seams. Yeah, and we treat, first of all, you're going to treat the seams because this is already waterproof. We have to treat the seams. So we're going to set these in thin set with yep. a notch trowel. 
You have an outside corner. Already cut and folded for us. Yeah, an inside corner. Already cut and folded for us. Yeah, and you slide those in. Again, you set that in thin set. Yes. Okay, we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna heat the seat. <laughs> so this is a board that we will put down with thin set. Yeah. All right, you place it in, and then you run an electric wire. I'll give you a reel right here. Okay, so here's the piece. And you wanna stay like three inches away from the wall and you just bring it in and you go up and down three inches away from the back wall yes. and you go three inches apart and you right. make a loop or I could go back and forth like this. And then this is going to get tied into its own thermostat for the space. Right, and then it will set the tile nice and warm. And so for the floor, back to the foam. Just lay it on the floor. So you guys have measured and cut this to size. Yeah, everything's cut. And the other half of this. I mean, yeah. already tapered is great, right? Because the old-fashioned way used to be a mud job where the guy had to come in and he well, had to Well, you have to put a it. pan in there. Right. So once you've glued all this down, again, with the thin set, you set this with the PVC cement, a lot of thin set around here. You force it right into place, and your drain is waterproof. And so I know it's a small thing, but the drain cover being square saves the tile guy so much work where he doesn't have to clip a little circle. It's a huge thing. I mean, it just cutting straight is always easier. Now, will the floor get heat as well? Yeah, we'll waterproof everything, tape all the joints, and put that same system down right here with a wire, and you'll have a heated floor. It's going to be a very sweet bathroom, Tommy. Sure is. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. So much of the water piping has been run in the building, but today's project is to run gas lines from the gas meter across the basement ceiling right here to our new boiler location. Now this boiler is gonna heat water for faucets, but also the building itself. And gas connections are important. You know, have a little leak on a water line, it's no big deal, but with gas, it's unsafe. But the way we connect gas is changing. Zach and Alex are our plumbing apprentices helping on this project and to help demonstrate how we've always cut steel pipe. This is a power drive. This is what I grew up on. Sitting over this, the pipe will turn and you'll cut, thread, and ream it. So Zach, why don't you get started? So first he's going to take this cutter right here and there's a cutter blade right here. He's going to get it tightened up and then turn the drive on. A little bit of tightening at a time. All right, so you can see that it's cut, but see there's still a raw edge right here and that's gonna add friction. So we gotta make sure that we deburr it with a reaming tool like this. Okay, so you can see how nice it is on the inside. But we're not done yet. We still have to cut threads into this. And these are tapered threads where they gradually get shallower. And that's done with this die right here. So let's get that set up. All right, slide that in. And, and Alex can put some oil on it. Ready to go? Here we go. There we go, great. Okay, so that gets plenty hot. That oil is really important for the protect the dye and to keep the work from overheating. Are you gonna back it off now? There we go. Good. So we've cut it, we've reamed it, and we've threaded it, but we're not done yet. We still have to wipe down the thread to get rid of the excess oil. Just grab me that fitting, would you? It still needs pipe dope to be applied on the threads and then we have to add a fitting. And the fitting has the opposing threads that are tapered just like the pipe itself. We turn that on clockwise. And then we have to tighten that up with two wrenches. One wrench on the fitting and another on the pipe. 
and you tighten that fitting up enough until you get the angle just right. But each one of these connections could be what, five or ten minutes. Well, there's a new method, a faster method that doesn't require all that. Our piping is still the same steel pipe we've always used, but the connection's a lot different. For that, we have a fitting. That fitting is made out of steel, but there's a gasket inside. See that yellow in there? That's a special anti-corrosion gasket that's going to not have any effect from the steel pipe or the corrosive nature of gas. Now, a tool will clamp that steel down, really seal on that gasket in. Alec, why don't you give it a start by cutting it? Good. All right, because it was cut square, there's no need to ream in there, but we do have to just clean it a little bit with some emery cloth just to make sure there's no imperfections that would go against the gasket. You don't have to do much. Okay. So now, you want to be sure that this fitting goes on enough to be sure that the gasket seals in the proper place, that there's enough meat inside. So an important safety step is to mark the pipe with a special marker. That tells you that you're on far enough. All right, Zach, why don't you come in with that tool, please? So this is the tool here. It has special jaws for each size of fitting. It's battery operated. It puts just the right amount of torque to compress this fitting. You put it right over the shoulder. You make sure the fitting's all the way onto the mark. And, you... and that's it. That's not going anywhere. And it's a safe connection. It took us about a minute, and that really adds up when you have a lot of gas connections. It saves a lot of time. Another day in the job site means another lesson with the apprentices. And Tommy, today, apparently, it is windows. Yes, we're installing uh, new windows replacement windows into the existing opening, and we're going to start in this room right here. All right, you guys are in good hands. Okay, so now we're going to replace the double-hung windows that are in the house. And what I mean by double-hung, that means that the top and the bottom sash hang on a rope and a pulley system, and they operate independently. We're going to replace them with the same type of a system, only we're not going to use the ropes and pulleys. Now, first of all, the type of window that we have here is primed on the inside, it has an aluminum clad on the outside with the color that the homeowner chose so they'll never have to paint the outside, so no maintenance. Good thing here is also that it's now insulated glass which will be much more efficient than the old windows. Now when you're installing replacement windows into an existing opening, there are a couple of different windows that you can get. You can actually get what is called a boxed unit where the window comes with a jam, the header, the two sides, and across the bottom, and you take that box and you slide it into the opening and you shim it as needed. Then you put your trim back on. These units are different. We're actually going to install a sponge balancing system on each side and snap the windows into it. All right? So the first thing we have to install these right here. These are sponge balancing systems. Now these blue clips are where the bottom of the window sets and they're attached to this string right here and there's a spring up there that holds the weight of the window so no matter where you position it, it will stay where it, you want it to stay. On the back side of this is actually a sponge and that sponge sits up against the jam like that and that sponge will stop any air from moving in between here, keeping the window nice and efficient. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is install our clips to hold our sponge balancers. And they are actually nailed to the jam. Once they're in place, we'll snap this against them or into them and that will hold it. There's a little groove right there that it goes in and right here, they pop in and that holds the whole thing to the jam. Now the height of this window, we're actually going to install five clips on each side. So what I want to do is I want to push it tight to the back of the casing, move it in just a little bit, I'm going to pre-drill just a starter hole. All right, now right in there. Got it? Yep. Good. 
All right, so now we'll just make it straight, and I'm going to put one more nail on the slot, in the center of the slot, because we want to be able to adjust it in and out just a little bit. And when you drive the nail, you don't want to drive it really tight, so just bottom it out. Good. All right. Now we're ready to install the vinyl liner. Let's do that one over there first. Okay, now we're going to put it in there, but make sure this weather stripping is out on top of the edge of the casing. So pull this out, slide it in, hold this out, push it right in. Snap to the back. How's it look? Let's see if we can get it in there. There you go. Good. Yep. Nice. Yes. All right, let's get the top sash now. Put it in the slot. Keep it up high. Now we'll put yours in the slot. All right, now keep the window level, drop it down. Okay, put a little bit of pressure on it, not much. Stand it up and slide it right into the spring balancers. There you go, good. All right, now push the window up. Good. Oh, no, you, you gotta make sure that it's locked in, see? Yep. All right, now bring it back down, let it sit there. Did you hear it click? Yep. There they go. All right, now they're on. Yeah, see, now it holds it into place. Nice. All right, now the bottom sash. The same process. The window in, keep the window level this way. Put it in your track, keep it up a little bit high till you're both in, and then bring them down level. Put a little weight on it to make sure it's seated in there, and then slowly push it up. Push the window down, make sure it's caught. There it goes. Now push it up. Yep, good. Okay, and bring it down. Got one of those loose. Bring it right down, it should catch. All the way down. All right, now we'll lock it. Let's go outside and see how it looks. All right, guys, there you go, your first window. What do you think? That's one sharp looking window. Yeah, it is. I'd say we taught you pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. I like how the aluminum keeps it smooth. The aluminum smooth and they'll never have to paint it and they're going to save a lot of money on their energy bill. Well, we only have 33 more to go. Oh, man. Let's get going. All right. Sun's not down yet. It's time to go home. Not yet, not yet. <laughs>
and build it up again, forcing them down, just like we did at the bottom. Whew, a lot of stuff going into that. A lot of stuff, a lot of work, and it's time consuming, so we're cutting all of our curved studs. Right here, we've made up a template. This is a piece that we've cut the back out to where we're gonna mount it to the plywood. All right, so now we take our template and we hold it flush on the top, even on the back where the plywood's gonna go and also even on the bottom edge that it's gonna go against the house. So now holding it tight, mark it. Got it. Okay. Okay, so now we've got a notch on this side so we can flip it over. Again, we want to make it flush on the back in both areas, t even on the top, and mark that. Good. What I want you to do now is you're going to cut it with a jigsaw. You're going to stay away from the line about a quarter of an inch because we only want to rough cut it with the jigsaw and we're going to fine tune it later. Okay. All right, when you cut with a jigsaw, you want to make sure that you hold the plate flat on the table so you need to put some down pressure on it. Okay. Kevin, what you're going to do is you're going to fine tune these with a the router. We have our piece that's the right size, the right dimension, and we're going to use that as a templating guide. We take our piece that's rough cut, put it on top, tight to the back here, even on the top, and flush on the back. We'll put a couple of screws in that to hold it so that it won't move. Okay. So now to follow that templating, we have a bearing on the bottom of our straight cutting bit that will cut flush with that bearing. And you're just gonna take it and make a cut nice and slow, holding the router firm. And make a nice slow cut all the way through, all the way around, and you're done. Okay? Okay, so now we have a piece of three-quarter inch plywood that we're gonna mount all of our curved studs to, and they're marked 16 on center to accept them. We also wanna put a little bit of glue in behind it and then screw from the other side. Okay, let's get these up on the wall. All right, now let's screw the plywood on. I want to keep it up about an eighth of an inch off the bottom. Good here. Okay, so now we'll screw this on. And the screws will pull the plywood right in and follow that contour. We fill in down there and then all the way around the house and we can start to shingle. And then crown molding right there. What do you think about that look? That's going to be great. Yeah, that is going to be really yeah. good. Right. Hey, boys. Who's hey. making all the noise out here? Hey, Richard, how are you? <laughs> Doing good. We're just finishing up this detail right here and starting to think about next week. What do you got coming up? Uh, next week, we will actually be finishing the rough plumbing. Good. Tommy, what about you? I got a small project inside for Joe to work on. Right, and I'm going to head down to the Idea House in Rhode Island to see a whole new type of window trim. Nice. So we've got all that coming up next time. Until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Joe Dolfino. I'm Rich Trithui. And I'm Tom Silva. For this old house. You need me to get anything? Give me, can I help? Tommy? <laughs> Next time on This Old House. We build a hearth for the wood stove. Mauro's got a quick fix for the holes in our plaster. We're gonna use like a two or three very thin coats. And we visit the realm of the mechanical maestro. Abe Bailu is staring at the blank wall which housed the distribution equipment for this whole building. So Abe, how do you get started on laying these systems out? It all starts with a nice new wall. That's next time on This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.